Society. Well, it's Julie again, and uh, we're still working with Angie. Angie is going to have some passive range of motion done on her left lower extremity this afternoon. So again, always before we start the process, we always explain to the patient what the purpose and the expectations are. So, hi Angie, I'm Julie. I'm here to do some passive range of motion on your leg. Passive range of motion is a gentle technique designed to keep you from losing your flexibility. For you, I just want you to relax. Let me do the work and there should not be really any discomfort. Maybe a little pull now and then, but let me know if anything bothers you. Sound okay? okay. All right. Now, Angie has slacks on, so it wouldn't be a major concern, but we do want to remember about draping. And so if it was necessary and we were going to drape her, we would um, expose the involved extremity and then wrap the sheet around so that it's covering both the front and the sides and the back. And as we move the patient's leg, if there was still an area that needed a little additional attention, just pull that sheet or towel, whatever it is, around the patient's leg. Remember, we just want to handle it in a nice professional manner that uh, keep the patient's modesty and their privacy protected. But seeing how she has slacks on, we can remove our sheet for today. I do have a, a rolled up towel underneath her legs. That's how we want to start passive range of motion. And so we're going to start with hip and doing hip flexion. Remember, we want to cradle the lower extremity, keeping the fingers away from the back of the joint. Bring that hand out here. And we're going to bring the patient up into hip flexion and just a little bit of abduction. Coming inward is uncomfortable, so we come up and out. And as we meet the end of the motion, slide that underneath hand out to give just a little extra pressure for doing knee flexion. So in this case, we're doing knee flexion and hip flexion at the same time. We're accomplishing knee extension and hip extension by bringing the leg back out and then remember, we'll give the knee a little extra attention for extension a little bit later. After I finished my flexion extension, I can remove the towel for a short time. And we want to move on to AB and A deduction, moving the patient's leg over to the side so we have plenty of room to complete our range of motion. For AB duction, bring the patient's leg out until you feel the end feel, and then reach across. Watch your body mechanics here. Notice as I move her out into abduction, I'm taking a step, and then a step to bring her back in. The next movement for the hip is internal and external rotation. And in this case, I just roll the patient's leg like it's a Lincoln log or a rolling pin. All the way in, feel the end feel, and all the way out, feeling the end feel there as well. Now as I've completed the hip motion, and I also did knee flexion and extension with that, I can go ahead and do my first multi-joint stretch for the lower extremity. That's the hamstring. With this position, support underneath the ankle, and then my hand closest to her head slides along the side of her joint. And as I bring that leg up, I'm feeling for the tension and bring her right back down. Remember, we're not stretching now, just passive range of motion. Feel the end feel and get out. Feel that end feel. Oftentimes, as you do a couple repetitions, you'll find that we can get a little more motion each time. Good finished the multi-joint muscle stretch for the hamstring. I'm going to slide that pillow or roll up towel back underneath the knee and now we want to spend a little extra attention for knee extension. In this case the top hand goes just above the knee with a little downward pressure. My bottom hand curls underneath the patient's ankle and my movement is just a nice simple weight shift from my down leg to my top leg. My top leg is the leg facing 
or closest to the patient's head. So just a subtle weight shift. Be careful now that you're not lifting the patient's whole leg. This hand here holds the patient in place and just move the lower leg. From here, we're gonna slip off her shoe. There we go. And we want to address ankle movements. We're gonna place our hand on the calcaneus or the heel and my top hand is just going to hold her in place. The movement for dorsiflexion and plantar flexion occurs by grabbing onto the heel or the calcaneus. The patient's foot is supported by your forearm, but the majority of the pressure and the movement occurs through the heel. So we want to focus in on that. It is absolutely essential that the pillow or the rolled up towel remains in place as we do this movement. It protects the muscle here and we must keep that in place as we do this motion. So three to five for dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. If you feel like you're not getting adequate plantar flexion as we bring the patient down, you can use this hand to give just a little extra pressure. So slide that hand down for a little extra pressure. Our other movement at the ankle is inversion and eversion. We want to stay away from the tickle area of the foot and we're going to hold on here and as we get closer to the toes I'm just going to slip off her sock anyway. We're going to grip across the ball of the foot, hold the distal leg in place and here's inversion and eversion. Inversion and eversion, inversion, and eversion. Being careful to stay away from the tickle area. Our last uh, single motion is going to be toes, and we're just going to curl those toes up and straighten them. Curl them and straighten them. Curl them and straighten them. And that sets us up to do our last multi joint muscle stretch. In this case, we're working on the gastroc soleus area behind the lower leg. And now, absolutely essential to remove the pillow in this area. And our movement is a reproduction of dorsiflexion without the towel. So I'm going to hold, grab a hold of the calcaneus, and just bring the patient up. The motion is primarily through the heel, even though her foot is supported by my forearm. Taking to the end of the motion and touching it and coming right back out. Good. And that completes passive range of motion on the lower extremity. Thanks.